Well, many scientists believe we're under assault by another form of common pollution. We may have underestimated invisible, odorless, silent, and potentially deadly. This form of pollution is everywhere. You can't escape it. Electromagnetic frequencies, EMFs, produced by most electrical devices, appliances, and the high-voltage power lines that surround us. And there is no escaping this invisible menace. Electropollution is not limited to cell phones and microwave ovens, home computers, laptops, cordless phones, televisions, refrigerators, hair dryers, coffee makers, even our cars add to the daily accumulation of electropollution that may be pushing us closer to a national health crisis. Some environmentalists call this proliferation of EMFs electropollution. And one United States government agency warns that the levels Americans are exposed to every day without even being aware of it may be dangerous. The fact is, you, your loved ones, your children, are exposed to 100 million times more EMFs, electromagnetic radiation, and microwaves than your grandparents. And now, one source of electropollution has become an increasingly integral part of our lives. Up close and personal, the cell phone. Brain cancer is up 25% since cell phones became popular. Every year, there are 183,000 more cases in the U.S. alone. The damage from electropollution is cumulative and may take years, even decades, to reveal itself. But every exposure may adversely affect your health. Several renowned neurosurgeons believe radiation from cell phones and other mobile devices are directly related to the 21% increase in brain tumors in children. Children and teenagers are at greatest risk from electropollution damage because their skulls are thinner, they have more brain fluid, and their bodies are not fully developed. How much time does your child spend on the cell phone every day? And how will the constant barrage of electromagnetic radiation from cell phone use affect your child's health in five years, 10 years, 20 or more years? And if you think using a hands-free set reduces your risk of exposure to deadly radiation, think again. According to research commissioned by Britain's Consumer Association, conventional hands-free sets may actually increase electric field strengths inside a user's head by three and a half times. It appears that the headset wire acts as a concentrating aerial that attracts and channels radiation toward the head. Not just from your cell phone, but from all sources of EMFs, electromagnetic radiation, and microwaves in the vicinity. In a recent study, neurosurgeons at Lund University in Sweden proved conclusively a link between radiation emitted from cell phones and brain damage. The researchers attached cell phones to the cages of rats and exposed them to intermittent electromagnetic radiation for only two hours, emulating typical cell phone use. Fifty days after that single two-hour exposure, the rat's brain showed significant blood vessel leakage, as well as areas of shrunken, damaged neurons. Researchers concluded that if human brains are similarly affected, the damage could produce significant long-term mental deficiencies. And in 2004, respected scientists in Sweden proved for the first time a definitive human link between cell phone use and benign brain tumors located exactly where the patients held their cell phones. According to one study, men who kept their cell phones in their pockets experienced a 35% reduction in sperm count. Do you or your children use a laptop computer or a video game console? Do you use these devices on your lap? Consider this. Scientists are exploring the connection between EMFs from the electronic devices we use on our laps and the astounding 50% increase in testicular cancer over the past 20 years. One important study in the U.S. found a link between those who work in an environment with high EMF exposure and neurodegenerative disorders, such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, and Lou Gehrig's disease. But it's not just about diseases. Research shows that continual exposure to this onslaught of electropollution disrupts your natural energy levels 
triggering an adrenal response, which, in turn, increases stress responses. This constant stress contributes to your energy depletion and fatigue, lack of concentration, poor work performance, and difficulty getting a good night's sleep. If electropollution is so dangerous, why doesn't the government step in and do something about it? Government officials will tell you that the studies are inconclusive, that they're waiting for long-term human studies to prove beyond a doubt that cell phones and other commonly used appliances, which bombard us continually with radiation, are truly harmful. Can you afford to wait? Are you willing to put your health and the health of your loved ones on the line while the government spends years confirming what so many respected scientists already consider an international health crisis?